this is my first video on technique. A question that every guitarist has is always about speed. That's usually the first question that I get asked. Everybody asks the same thing. And you know, how to create more speed, how to play faster. And so uh, I'm going to address now that here. The first thing that I need to say about speed is that there are different types of speed. Uh, the first thing is, for example, there's um, uh, speed when we play chords, speed when we play arpeggios, and then speed when we play scales. And even within the scales, there are different types of speed and the different types of ways that we can create speed when we play. Uh, for example, when we play flamenco-inspired scales in the literature, those are different from the kind of scales that we play and the speed that we generate when we play, say, scales from a uh, piece by Paganini or something from the 19th century, or even the uh, initial scale passage that I just played, the, uh, that's from Villalobos, century number seven. So, um, you know, in order, uh, in or, you know, to be able to, to talk about all these forms of speed in one video would be impossible, but what I'd like to do here is to talk about one form, uh, something that I call reflexive speed. Now, reflexive speed is a kind of speed that um, follows the laws of uh, inertia, and in that one initial force creates a chain reaction in the, in the fingers. So um, in this case, let's, uh, I'm going to use an example. Let's say we have these four notes. Five, rather. And, um, and you know, usually the way we play that is by articulating every note. One, two, three, four, five. And um, the way reflexive speed works is that we create one initial force in the first stroke, something like this. You know, that's very exaggerated, but just so you can see how it works. And then the other notes are essentially bounces in the fingers that follow the force of the initial stroke. So then, as such, you get something like this. As you can see, you have one very forceful note, and then the other ones that are weak. Uh, so, um, the idea is to be able to chain these things together, so you have... Um, and that's how the uh, how that's how the principle of this technique operates. So we normally can create long chains of uh, of, of these uh, progressions by going something like that. Or the other thing that we can do with them is actually create one initial force that can chain more than four notes at a, at a time. So. Essentially, aside from the first third note that I played, then all of the notes were a result of the first bounce of stroke. Okay, so um, a way to practice something like this is first we have to understand how to create the first four full stroke and see how that what that does in the hand. So um, when you play a one stroke, and I'm going to exaggerate the movement of my right hand so you can see how the forces of the hand operate when you create a four full stroke. Let's say you play this first one, and we're going to use a rest stroke for this. Um, naturally, what you're going to feel after that first stroke is something that, though your hand may not move, it's going to feel like it's bouncing back and forth or from one side to the other side of the hand. And um, that is the uh, inertia that we're creating with the initial force. Um, and then once we understand how that feels, then what we do next is to, create, to play the next note, but not as an action. We, in other words, we don't say play the next note, we don't do this, and then play another note, but rather here, and then ref create a reflex action, or a reaction in the, uh, in the next stroke. So we get this, and then that, and then that. See, so force here, and then the, the bounce is creating the second note. So um, then once you understand that the key is to be able to put the two together very, very quickly, so force and reaction, action and reaction, so we get this kind of thing. See? And as you can see, that first note is always very strong and the second one is always very soft. Once we, then once we do that, uh, the next step would be to try to add a third note to the pattern. So one, two, three. Something like that. And then you can create a fourth note. And, of course,
because after that, like I said, we can create long successions, and the better you become with this technique, you can create longer sequences to, that follow essentially one single stroke. So all of those were essentially bounces of the first note. And uh, the other thing that we do with these is uh, we play se several sequences of them, and, the, um, and what we're looking to do ultimately is to make sure that the initial force is not so obvious uh, to the ear, uh, so we don't want to play that too loud, and then on the other hand, the ones that are reflexes uh, need to be played a with a little bit more intention. So, um, say, instead of this, we end up with something like that. So at this point, the two are actually sounding, um, you know, the, the reflex notes and the force note are actually sounding very close to each other in terms of volume, in terms of intensity. Uh, so the technique becomes invisible to the uh, listener. Okay, so now we have something like that. See. Um, now another thing that's also very common, and you're you're going to see this with a, with a lot of players that apply this technique when they're playing a scale pattern, is that they always apply an initial slur uh, after the first forceful note, and the reason for that is that it balances the uh, the right hand, it it causes uh, more stability. Usually, the first forceful note can be so forceful that the uh, the impact of the shock in the hand can cause the, the fingers to oscillate a little bit. So if you if you add a slur after the first note, then your hand, your right hand comes back to more stable levels. So that's one of the reasons why when we play the uh, the uh, Villalobos 7, we have this uh, that slur immediately right after the forceful stroke. So, so anyway, uh, if you if you work on this type of thing, you know, just make sure that you get your forceful stroke in place and then your reflexes. Learn to understand the feel between one and the other and then try to see how many you can put together. It's not a particularly difficult technique. Uh, initially, you know, initially what's difficult is to understand the forces. But if you understand the forces then uh, it, it essentially becomes very easy and it runs itself. So um, anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, probably in the next video I'm going to talk about different types of speed, uh, maybe uh, speed regarding arpeggios or different forms of scales for example, uh, but the, I think the arpeggio is very significant because we do that a lot, so say something like this, something like that, uh, that essentially runs on similar principles but uh, the application is a little bit different. Okay, well, Hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below the video. And uh, thanks for watching and take care.